I'm just up at the Keese Car Park up Cairngorm. I'm going to take a look up into the ski area and see what work the contractor Balfour B has been doing to the railway. You can see the helicopter here that they've been using to move materials up onto the hill. So here's the railway just above the Cass Car Park and this is the first pier and you can see they've put scaffolding up and you can also see they've cast some concrete on the uphill side of the pier there. This is one of two details that they've been using to strengthen the piers. As we go further up the hill you'll see these in varying states of construction. Some of them have been pretty much finished like this, but some of them are still being built. So this is the second anchor block above the base station. So these anchor blocks, what they do is they actually hold the track uphill from here longitudinally. Because all of the bearings uphill of this anchor block until the next anchor block can essentially slide longitudinally. So this anchor block holds all the track in place. You can see here they're extending the anchor block. They've broken out some of the old concrete and they've, they're tying in new rebar to that existing structure. I believe what they're planning to do is put new bearings sort of at the end of this new bit of concrete once it's cast in order to help support this, this beam you can see. As you'd expect to see, the beam on the downhill side of the anchor block isn't attached, whereas the beam on the uphill side of the anchor block is attached. The anchor blocks are big lumps of concrete and you can also see that they've got some rock anchors going down into the ground to hold it in place. So I've now walked up to Pier 29 and this is another anchor block. Uh, you can see that they're doing the same modifications to this anchor block as the last one. I'm here at Pier 31 and I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you these bearings. So this is the left hand bearing looking up the hill and you can see that there is a low friction disc in there which I think is made out of Teflon and then this sliding surface here is stainless steel and as the concrete contracts and expands with changes in temperature um, it can move over this this bearing um, so the further that you are from the downhill thrust block the more the uh, bearing will need to move the other side of the track is supported on another bearing but this one uh, is slightly different design and this actually you can see holds the uh, 
the beam onto the pier laterally, but it still allows the, the beam to move uh, longitudinally over the bear. This is Pier 38 and it's the first one that we've looked at that's just a normal pier and not a thrust block. You can see that they've put some scaffolding up around this one and they've also just recently installed these steel props that go down onto these precast concrete plinths. So the reason that they're putting these props in is because during an inspection uh, the engineers noticed that the bearings, which I just described before, were not uh, in the correct position. They were slightly displaced from where they should be. So they need to put these props in, in order to shore up the piers. The way this is going to work, I think, is that they're going to use a jack and put the jack in this gap at the bottom here, and they're going to preload the prop by 50 kilonewtons on both sides, so each prop's going to get 50 kilonewtons. That's 100 kilonewtons in total. So there'll be basically 10 tons pushing onto this cross beam in that direction. And that's going to hold the pier steady. And they're, what they're going to do is they're going to replace all of the bearings on each pier and they're also going to install a new bearing on each pier and you can see when I say a new I mean an additional one so instead of being two there'll be three and this is the base plate I think for the third bearing which is going to go in the middle you can see there's holes in the underside of it there and they coincide with the holes for the post-tensioned anchors in the top of the cross member you can see there. Now up at Pier 46, this is just below the mid station and the sheiling which you can just see underneath the track there. You can see with this uh, pier they're part way through constructing the foundation for the precast plinths. Um, they've, they've used a steel bracket in order to hold the, the precast plinth in the correct place. Um, and then I guess they'll fix the shutters around around that rebar like they've done on the further away one there and then once they've got that done they'll chop her in the concrete and uh, get those cast it's quite an awkward excavation because the pier is pretty tall uh, and the slope at the back is quite um, steep they've, they've had to, to dig down quite far and they are chasing the, the slope behind up with their bar and they've also got another pier quite close by so it's, it's quite a tricky, tricky um, excavation. You can see they've got a board up there with an angled piece of wood on it. That's what they've used in order to, to get the angle right for the excavation. 
I'm up at Pier 53 now, which is just above Sheeling and opposite the M1 Pomo over there. You can see that uh, we're underneath the passing loop and each of the two piers have got two props. Just looking at the bottom of these props a little more closely, I think they've got these rubber washers on here to allow them to install the top of the prop without too many problems. Kind of gives them a bit of wriggle room. And they're using uh, block and tackle uh, to move the prop up into position. And that block and tackle is just going straight up off the uh, concrete beam up there. I'm up at Pier 56 now. This is just at the end of the passing loop. Uh, I think this pier is going to get three props. And uh, you can see they've just dug out the foundation for the new props. And you can see the existing foundation for the pier, which is quite significant. This is Pier 62, which is just at the top of the access track. You can see that they've just recently stripped the shutters from the foundation for the uh, precast plinths. They've still got those little up stands to, to cast, but before they do that, they'll need to put the, uh, the precast plinths in position. Uh, in order to do that, they'll be using that block and tackle system off the, uh, off the beams. Looks like this was probably quite an awkward excavation. You can see they've shored up the base of the excavation there in order to stop the soil coming down on the on the guys working on the foundation. Uh, it's quite a, quite a steep slope above which has created that problem. Just looking at the spoil at the top of this access track, you can see that it's some pretty big boulders and basically all boulders actually there's very little soil in there so that will have been really really hard digging for the excavator I'm up at pier 65 now and this is an anchor block this pier it's approximately 300 meters uphill from the last anchor block which is just at the sheiling uh, that means that this bearing here has to deal with the biggest variation um, of all of the bearings along this length of track to the next anchor block because it's got to deal with 300 meters worth of concrete expansion and contraction so this one will be displaced the most um, out of all of the, the bearings on this length of track this is Pier 67 and this is the first pier that I've shown you that uses the concrete jacket which you can see at the front edge there instead of the props. I think they've used this detail on the shorter piers and you can see that there's some bolts there that go through the existing pier and they go into the the new jacket at the front there and I believe those bolts are pre-stressed I don't know what they're pre-stressed to but they're stressed and then tightened down against the, the concrete there here's a view of the other side of that concrete jacket you can see that they've grouted all the way up so that it supports the underside of that cross member there Just walking up past Pier 68, that's another one with the concrete jacket and you can see that there's no access track along here, I think it's too steep for them to put an access track in, so I, what they've done is they've used a walking excavator in order to dig out the uh, foundations for these jackets, uh, looks like they've done that 
all the way up the steep part of the White Lady here. I'm at Pier 70 now, and at this one, they're part way through constructing the concrete jacket. You can see they've broken out some concrete on the existing pier foundation there, and they've got all the steel fixed. And you can see that the, the steel is gonna fit snugly around the, uh, the pier. And they've also got these spiral bits of bar. Now, what they're gonna do is they'll coincide with the holes that they've cored through the existing pier. And that's where the, uh, the, the bolts will go through. I think they're, they're tension bolts, as I mentioned before. Just looking at the uh, these post tension bolts on the top of the cross member. I was just thinking that it's a good job they didn't cut these threads really short because they're going to use these bolts to fix the new bearing which is going in the middle. So it'll sit down here and it'll go up onto the underside of this part of the beam. Um, my understanding is that the the new bearings, both of the uh, the bearings at the side will just be these pot bearings which can only take vertical load, they can't take any lateral load and then the middle, the new bearing will be a, a bearing that can take lateral load. At the moment the left side bearing is a pot bearing and the right side bearing is one of these lateral bearings. These are the precast plinths that they use for fixing the steel props. And you can see that they're made by FP McCann on the 30th of March. So they're quite new. And they weigh 0.74 tons, so that's 740 kilos. You wouldn't want that to fall on your toe. I'm up at Pier 72. You can see that uh, they are finishing off the foundation for the props. It looks like an awkward excavation. They've got running water at the back. But I see they've created a sort of drain that runs down the side here. And then got a little ditch. And then takes that out to some silt fencing that you can see there to stop silt getting taken down the hillside. It's quite good. This is Pier 74. Just looking down at what they've done here for the foundation block. It looks like they've place type one and compacted it around the side and the back of the foundation block. And I think they've done that in order to give some passive resistance to the foundation block at the back. Uh, they don't need it at the front, so they've not put anything there. Because they wouldn't really be doing anything at the front. And I think that's why they've done that. Made it up to this walking excavator now. You can see that it's got wheels at the front and at the back it's got these arms that stick out and grip the ground and then I think what they do is they use the bucket along with these arms in order to move up and down the hill. You need to be quite gutsy to drive one of these. Quite skilled work and be easy to get it wrong. This is Pierre. 77 there's 93 in total well it's actually 94 but the first one's zero so there's 93 i'm just looking at this uh the shuttering that's been dropped off here you can see all the straps and stuff on it i think that's probably been dropped off by the helicopter recently i also wonder if that a cage of rebar has just been dropped off by the helicopter too that's probably what they do they probably fix that 
down in the yard, down at the car park, and then bring it up with a helicopter, that would make sense. Here's Pier 78, which is the last thrust block. If you listen very carefully, you might hear some creaking noises. I wonder if that's either the the rail or possibly even the, the concrete moving over that uh, bearing. This is Pier 82 and it's quite an interesting one because you can see they've still got the shutters in place and they've also got this platform up on the track with a funnel in order to guide the concrete down into the shutter. So I guess uh, the helicopter comes along with a hopper of concrete and uh, someone guides it into that um, chute and then that goes into the into the form. It's quite interesting looking at the, the formwork. They've got this aluminium extrusion and then timber forms on inside that. And just looking around it, you can see they've, they've doweled bars into the existing concrete and then used wedges in order to hold the shutter in place. And they've also bolted in, you can see a bolt down there at the back. They've bolted in that at the top and the bottom in order to hold it in place while the, the concrete goes off. The other interesting thing about this one is that it looks like they've got shallow rock. I think they've been breaking rock out here. You can see those big chunks of fresh granite and the granite at the bottom of the excavation there. We're at Pier 86. Uh, just thought I'd show you this rebar cage in position. And you can see these uh, spiral bits of rebar that they've put in to coincide with the, the holes that they've cored through the existing plinth or existing pier, sorry. And then you can see that this is the core that they took out of the concrete or part of it. Just opposite Pier 90 you can see another one of these walking excavators. Although this one's a slightly different design. It looks like it's got four wheels and then kind of these little claws at the front. Quite a, another quite cool bit of kit. Just at Pier 93 now, which is the last one before the tunnel mouth. You can see that they're part way through putting in these precast blocks uh, they're using that block and tackle arrangement which is hanging off the concrete beams uh, looks like it might have been a bit of an awkward excavation because we've got blocks of what looks like to me a rock head at the back so it's probably quite hard digging to get down to formation I'm now walking off the hill via Windy Ridge. Hope you've enjoyed my video on the repairs that Balfour BT are doing to the railway viaduct. If anybody knows anything about how or why piers started rotating into the hillside, which is the reason they're doing all this work, I'd be really interested to hear from you. I haven't talked at all about the work that they're supposed to be doing to the beams and the scarf joints between the beams. I might do a video on that when they start doing that work and if there's any interest 